Robert McCall, who has retired from the USMC and DIA DCS, now lives a quiet life in Boston, where he works at a home goods store. He helps his partner Ralphie train to become a security officer. Unable to sleep, Robert often spends late nights reading at all-night restaurants. Over time, Robert befriended Terry, who was trafficked by the Russian Mafia. The two often talked about the books they had read and Robert's goal to read 100 books as set by his wife. Is that your birthday? Birthday some guy at work. I'm sorry, I'm breaking protocol, right? Sit, sit. One night, Terry tells Robert that her real name is Alina and that she wants to be a singer. Robert and Alina went for a walk, but Alina's pimp, Slavi, suddenly came hit Alina and forced her into the car. Slavi gave Robert a business card for their escort service before leaving. Bueno. A few nights later, a seriously injured Alina was admitted to the ICU at a nearby hospital. Hearing the news, Robert went there and learned from his friend Mandy that Slavi was responsible for her condition. Robert finds Slavi and his men in their restaurant and is flatly rejected when he offers to buy Alina's freedom for $9,800. He assesses the room and their weapons, estimates the number of seconds it would take to kill them all. and then does so, speaking to Slavi in the final seconds before he dies, saying that Slavi should have taken the money. Unbeknownst to him, Slavi and his men were part of a much larger syndicate, led by Russian oligarch Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy Renson, Pushkin's man, arrives in Boston to investigate the attack. We figured two, maybe three guys kill them all that quickly. system's hard drive was taken, so we're blinded. Aided by Boston Police Department detectives on Pushkin's payroll, Teddy roots out rival gangs in the area. Robert continues to exact vigilante justice on the criminals he encounters. He blackmails two corrupt police officers to return the extorted money to Ralphie's mother. and beats a gunman with a hammer after he robs a hardware store, taking a ring belonging to his co-worker. Teddy kills Mandy after learning that she was hiding information about Robert and lying about her friendship with Alina. He visits Robert at his apartment, posing as a police detective, but Robert is not fooled by his disguise. Teddy shows him a photo of a strangled Mandy before leaving, offering it as a warning. Teddy and his band of mercenaries are unable to kidnap Robert on two occasions. Let's go. Robert visits his former colleagues at the DIA, Susan Plummer and her husband, Brian. He asks Susan for help in identifying Teddy. Susan tells Robert about Operation Pushkin and that Teddy's real name is Nikolai Ichenko, a Spetsnaz agent turned Russian secret police agent. Susan also reveals that Nikolai killed two Boston police detectives and one of them named Frank Masters was not heard from for days. Robert tracks down Masters and threatens him to help destroy one of Pushkin's money laundering warehouses. Masters and Pushkin's men are detained when the police arrive, and they find a note left by Robert to follow the money. He confronts Nikolai again, threatening to do more damage if he continues to pursue him. He then destroyed two of Pushkin's oil tankers.
In retaliation, Nikolai kidnaps Robert's co-worker at the hardware store to force a meeting. To Nikolai's surprise, Robert skips the meeting with Nikolai and instead kills the men guarding the hostages. Everybody out of here, don't leave anybody behind. You use the service door. Nikolai arrived with his men, but Robert quietly finished them all off one by one with makeshift weapons collected throughout the hardware store. Just as Nikolai was about to kill Ralphie, who stayed behind to help, Robert killed Nikolai with a nail gun. Three days later, Robert finds Pushkin in his Moscow mansion, kills all his guards and tricks him into electrocuting himself to death. The gun's not there, just put the towel on. And now you've come to kill me. Yes. Reading now. Oh, no. Sometime later, Alina, having recovered, met with Robert and told him that she had started a new life. An online ad as The Equalizer, 